Hi guys, welcome to the next video of the Spring tutorial series. In the last video, we discussed about the Spring dependency injection concept. In this video, we will try to discuss about the Spring container and the Spring configuration XML file. Now, Spring is a container based framework and it contains the beans in it. Now, the question is, what are these beans? Now, the beans are the objects that are created and managed by the Spring container. They are nothing but the plain objects but they are called as beans in the spring terminology because they are totally created and managed by the spring container. The container instantiates those objects and their dependencies are fed into those objects at the time when the objects are getting created by the container and the full fledged objects are returned to us when we ask for it. Now, there has to be some way to tell spring about what beans to manage and how to wire those beans together so that they can work closely and that is done by declaring them and their dependencies in the configuration file which is an XML file. Now the act of injecting beans to a member variable of a class is also known as wiring. So we may be using this term wiring which means the injection of beans. A Spring has one interface called as bean factory interface that provides methods capable of managing the beans. The most commonly used bean factory implementation class is the XML bean factory class. So in effect we can say that this XML bean factory class is acting like a container and it creates and manages the beans declared in the XML file. There is one thing about the spring container is that this bean factory interface and the XML bean factory class are absolute and they are deprecated. But since these were the foundation of the Spring container, so I thought of starting with the Bean Factory itself. In our Spring MVC project, we set up the Spring MVC Dispatcher servlet. But we want to see the usage of this XML Bean Factory, which we can't do if we use this Dispatcher servlet as it is provided by Spring and we don't have any control on that servlet. So let's do one thing, let's create another servlet for us where we will see the usage of this XML bean factory container and we will see how it works. So let's create one servlet first. Okay, let's name it as spring servlet. Now inside it's do get method we will instantiate the spring bean factory to instantiate the spring container. What we will do, we will instantiate the XML bean factory class. Now you can see that it requires a resource class. Now the resource is nothing but the configuration XML file having the beans declaration. So that XML file will be wrapped around this resource class. We can provide resource in two ways. One by using class path resource class and another by using a file system resource class. Now class path resource class needs a file present in the class path of the project while file system resource class needs a file present in our file system. We can use either of these. I am preferring this class path resource class for time being. and it requires the name of the configuration file. Let's give it spring.xml. Sign it to a bean factory interface. Okay, now the next step is to create this XML file. We are creating this in the SRC folder so that it will be there in the class path. Okay, now what this XML bean factory will do, it will read the XML file provided by us in the class path resource and it creates the objects from the beans which we declare here. Now it can also create beans using the annotations. So the configuration metadata could be in the form of XML or it could be in the form of annotations. 
Now for time being, I will use the XML file as a configuration XML file. We will see the usage of annotations later. Now let's see how we can declare a bean in our configuration XML file. We have to use something called beans namespace and its XSD before we can use the beans related tags. I have it copied. I'll just paste it here. So this is the XSD we are going to use and this is the entire namespace. So this is the XSD which has the tags for defining the beans. We can get the actual location of this XSD from the spring beans jar file. Go to spring library. Go to spring beans jar. And here in the meta in a folder you can see there is something called spring.schemas. Open this. Now you can see that this file has the mapping of the URI with the actual location of the XSD. So we were using the springbeans.xsd. So for the springbeans.xsd, this is the actual location of the XSD. Spring org, org spring framework beans factory XML. Okay, so this is the one. So this XSD will be used to validate our spring XML file for the beans related tags. Similarly for other tags also they have the spring.schemas file in their respective jar files like for context related tags we will find the mapping file in the spring context jar file and even the xsd will be there in that jar file. Now the actual path of the XSD we can easily get from the spring.schemas file. So this is the way spring XSDs are included. Now the logic behind the XSD location is that we need to specify the URI of the XSD in our XML file. Later spring will map this URI from the spring.schemas file and find out the actual XSD to be used for our XML tags. Now suppose if it is not able to find that XSD then it will use the web to get the XSD from the spring framework.org using the same URL and now you can notice that the beans is the root element for our configuration file and inside this beans tag we can declare as many number of beans we want. Now the thing to note is that the spring doesn't have the only beans namespace. It has so many other namespaces available through which we can configure the spring container now, and each of these namespaces are serving one purpose with their own set of tags. We will use some other set of namespaces as we move along. For time being we will just stick to the beans namespace. Okay now let's define our bean in this XML file using the bean tag something like this. So what it does, it tells Spring to create an object for us using this user class. So when the Spring container is instantiated at that time, what it does, it instantiates the beans defined in the Spring XML file. Now in our case, it will use the default constructor of this user class to construct the object. And this id attribute gives bean a name by which it will be referred to in the Spring container. Now bean factory class also has one method called as get bean using which we can get the handle or reference of the bean which we want from the container. Let's see this. Here we just need to provide the id of the bean which we want to retrieve. Let's give it as a user. And get bean returns an object so we need to typecast it to our respective classes. Now getBean has also one overloaded method where we can pass the class name which is needed like this. The name of the bean which we want to retrieve and the class. 
now we can just directly assign it to a user so like this Uh, in this case we need not typecast the returned object because the method itself will take care of typecasting and will return the appropriate object to us okay, let's put few sys out here okay, I have not created getters and setters for these two fields Let's create the getters and setters for these two. Okay, now I can use get user ID. Password is get password. We can now build this and test out our servlet. Now before testing our servlet, what we need to do, we need to comment out this dispatcher servlet. Right now we are not using it. We will use our servlet for testing the bean factory. Let's build the project and test out our servlet. Okay, run it on the server. Just copy this URL pattern here, paste it in the browser and hit this. So you can see that we are able to get object and its data. So Spring is able to instantiate our user object and we are able to retrieve that user object using the getBin method. So this is the way we declare beans in the Spring configuration file. So this was the overview of a Spring Container Bean Factory, Spring Configuration XML file here and then declaring beans and retrieving beans from the bean factory using its get bean method. Now I am again reiterating that the bean factory interface and the XML bean factory class are obsolete and they are deprecated but these were the foundation of the Spring Container so I thought of starting with the bean factory. I hope you liked this video. In the next video, we are going to talk about the application context which is acting as an active spring container. Thanks for watching.